In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. We're going to have another exciting story from my favorite book, and yours too, the Bible. And today we're going to learn that God is always watching out over us, and He can cause everything to turn out for good. But first, Eddie has something he wants to say to you. Eddie, how are you today? Well, you know, I was just thinking that I'm kind of afraid to tell my friends about Jesus. You know, I'm thinking if I say something, they might laugh at me. You know, I hate to be laughed at. And yet, I know God, he's real, Jesus, he's his son, and I should tell people, but I'm a little afraid. Well, Eddie, I can understand that, but you know, there's people that talk about the Lord, and they're actually persecuted. Some of them go to prison, and some of them are get beaten, and some of them even die because they're willing to tell people about Jesus. Wow, that's, that's scary. I wonder how they do it. I, I wonder if I would be that brave. You know, I hope I would be, but I just don't know. Oh, that, that's really terrible. I need to pray for those people. I'm going to pray more. And I just want to make sure that if I had to, I would be brave too. Well, Eddie, I'm glad you came today because we're going to learn what makes a person be brave in those situations. So I'm glad you're here because I think you have a lot to learn. I'm glad I came too. I can hardly wait. Kids, I got to go. I love you. Mm, be sure and pray for those who are in trouble because they tell people about the Lord. Wow, I admire them. But I want to be like them, too. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. Has there ever been something that you were going to say and you thought, Ooh, I wonder if I should say this and you're a little hesitant, you're a little afraid? You know, God says... There's something that you can say with boldness. You can say it with boldness because it is absolutely true. And our verse today says, so we may boldly say. You know why we can boldly say it? Because it is true. Because it is in the Bible. So we can boldly say. Well, what is it that we can boldly say? Well, we can boldly say the Lord is my helper. Now, if you were in a tough situation, but you knew that the Queen of England would come to your aid, if you were ever in trouble, would that give you confidence? Do you know what? The Queen of England, she doesn't know what you say. She is not always there, but there is someone, and he is our helper and that is Jesus now you know sometimes we see pictures of Jesus and he's on the cross or he's a baby and th that's true he was but this is what he looks like today he went up to heaven he rose and the Bible says he's sitting on a throne at the right hand of God and he's ruling the entire world he sees you he knows you. He has power. He can help you. So we can boldly say, the Lord is our helper. If you've put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as being the only one that can forgive your sins, he is your helper. Now, you know, if he is our helper, then we definitely do not need to be afraid. This little boy's afraid, right? Well, I want to tell you something. We're just going to cross that out. Because when the Lord is our helper, I 
will not fear. Now, kids, when are we afraid? We're afraid when something scary happens. So we have a choice. We have a choice to believe the truth. And the truth is that the Lord, King of the universe, is our helper. And so we need to say, I will not be afraid. I'm going to make the right choice because of the facts, and I'm not going to fear. Now, that's very hard. We have to know and believe the truth that God really is ruling or reigning, or there are times that we would be afraid. Now, the next part of our verse, it says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? So I want to ask you the question. What can man do? do to you? Well, I hope you did not say nothing because man can do a lot to us. Well, if the Lord is our helper, why does the Lord allow men to sometimes do very terrible things? Maybe you live in your own home and there may be people in your home that are doing very terrible things to you. Maybe they're very mean to you and you don't deserve it. Maybe there's somebody that moved in and they're just not nice ever to you. Maybe they're doing other things that are not right. Do you know that there are countries today and if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are put into prison for just telling someone about him? And then in prison, if they just put you in a cell and lock you there, that would be fine. But no, they beat you and they torture you, and then some people even are killed. So you're thinking, why does this verse say, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. How can we say that if people can kill you? Do you know that if somebody takes your life and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, where do you go right then? You go immediately to be in heaven. What if you were planning this fabulous trip to this wonderful place and you could hardly wait to go and someone said to you, you can go today. You don't have to wait anymore. You can go today. Well, that's what happens when we go to heaven. If someone kills us, then God says right now, you're immediately ushered into my presence. Oh, they mean it for evil. They do it because they don't want to hear about God and they don't like you. But God says, oh, no, I'm in charge here. This is going to be for your good. And then God remembers what they do. Oh, you know, you'll be in heaven by then. And maybe the people on earth don't even have the ability to punish them. But God says, I will. Justice will be done. Now, uh, but uh, what if you go to prison and they torture you and you stay alive, but you're being beaten wouldn't that cause fear? It would, except if you knew the truth. And the truth is that if they torture and they beat you, then you, for all eternity, are going to have rewards in heaven. When Jesus left this earth and his disciples were taken to prison and they were beaten, and oh, in those days when they beat you, it just tore open your back. Do you know what they said? The Bible says that they praised God and they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for his sake because Jesus had told them that when they treat you bad on this earth, I will have great reward for you. So when they treat you bad, you know what Jesus is really saying? He's saying, I have greater reward for you than you ever thought, than you could have ever imagined. Because if they hadn't have done that, and I didn't allow that, then your reward would not be as great. So they may mean it for evil, but we don't have to fear because God says what I have prepared for you, for you when you get to heaven is so wonderful and so great. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me that's going to destroy anything, 
anything bad the man does to me is just going to give me greater reward or I'm going to get to heaven sooner. And you know, kids, that's the truth. And so we're going to learn this verse, and it's hard sometimes, but when you know the truth, it's easier to have the right attitude and make the right choice. I will not fear, because I know the king of the universe is working this out, and it's going to be better for me because of it in the end. So now we're going to do the motions, and the motions go, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? All right, can you sing that now? So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13, 6. Can you do that one more time? You did a great job. One more time. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13, 6. That was wonderful. Now, there are some very terrible things that can happen to people today. But sometimes just simple things make us very, very fearful. Do you know this little boy is teasing others? You may think, oh, it's fun to tease other people. But if you make fun of the way they look, the way they talk, the way they dress, the way they are, that is not right. God made them that way. There is a little saying that says, sticks and stones may break my bones. You come after me with sticks and you come after me with stones and they may break my bones. But it says, words will never hurt me. That is so untrue. Words hurt us worse than sticks or stones. You know, when someone teases and calls us down and says you're no good and you're not worth anything. That is so hurtful. There's kids today that just don't even want to live anymore because people are so mean and so cruel in what they say. You know, life is hard for everybody. Don't add to anybody's misery. And then after you have teased somebody, don't say, I was just kidding. When you tease someone or make a joke about them, it's always based on some truth. So don't do that at all. And you know what, kids? Bullying. You know that a bully is always someone that wants to feel better about themselves? So in order to feel better about themselves, instead of doing something that contributes, they pick on someone, and they always pick on someone that's smaller. Have you ever seen a bully go up to someone twice their size and call them names? No, because they're really a chicken at heart. But that can be very scary. And so when there is a bully, we need to take the necessary steps. Ask the Lord what you should do. Maybe your parents, maybe someone at school. And if someone is being bullied, then give them power. And you do that by saying, you didn't deserve to be bullied. That he shouldn't have said that. What you did was not wrong. And by just saying those words, you can give back power 
to the person that has been bullied. And to this person, you can take their power away by saying, that wasn't right, you shouldn't have done that, that wasn't very manly, that wasn't very kind, and you can take their power away. And you know, those things cause us a lot of fear. And there's a lot of bad things that can happen, but you know what God has said? That we need to trust God to bring good out of bad. Very bad things can happen, but I don't care how bad they are. God can bring good out of them. Well, that's what's going to happen in our story today. And Elisha, remember he traveled around? Elisha traveled around, and as he traveled around, he would teach the young man about God. Now, in his day, it was a lot like the times that we live in now, because there weren't that many that believed in God. Now, the Bible did say that there were 7,000 that had not bowed the knee to Baal. But when the children of Israel came into the land, there were two to three million people. So when you take 7,000 out of two to three million, that's not very many. And as he would travel around, there were many people, we know the children, they made fun of him, and they didn't probably give him respect. Oh, you're telling about God, you know, that's, that's so old-fashioned. Oh, you know, we don't believe that way anymore. Well, so when he did meet someone that loved the Lord, it was so special. And there was one city that he would go to often, and he would pass by. And that was the city of Shunem. And in the city of Shunem, there was a lady, and she was a very wealthy woman. Now, in Elisha's time, God had told the people that you are to take in visitors, strangers. So if they didn't have any hotels or places for visitors to stay because the people were to take them into their homes, give them a bed, give them something to eat, and take care of them. And of course, while they were doing that, then they were able to tell them about, oh yes, and we have a God, and our God is the one true God. So it was a wonderful way to tell others about the Lord. But the Bible says that she, when she saw Elisha, she constrained him. That means she, she had to, would you stay with me? And maybe he says, oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, please, please. And so finally he said, yes, I will stay at your house. And so the Bible tells us that there were many times that he would stay. He stayed there often. When Elisha would stay at her house, I'm sure he would love to talk to this woman's husband because remember when Elijah found Elisha, that he was a farmer. Well, this man was a farmer too. And I know they could talk about the crops. How are the rains this year? Do you think we're going to get much corn? And they just had many wonderful times together. And of course, the woman, she would always make sure that Elisha had plenty to eat and good food. And during all those times that he spent there, you know, they did not have TV or probably books. And I don't know, but the Bible tells us, and I'm sure, that he would tell all about the stories. Now, remember, he had spent time with Elijah. Ja. So he could tell all about Elijah too. And you remember the time that Elijah, he had spent time with the widow and the widow's son and how there was a little bit of oil and, and, and a little bit of flour. And every day there would be plenty then to eat for the next day. It was so wonderful. Now, the story we didn't have was that this woman, she had a little son, and oh, she loved her son so much. But the Bible tells us that while Elijah was staying there, her son died. <gasps> and she was so sad. And so they carried the little boy up and put the little boy on Elijah's bed. And Elijah just says, oh, Lord, what should I do? This little boy, it was the joy of her life. How, what should we do? And the Lord says, all right, I want you to put your hands on his hands and your eyes on his eyes and, and just kind of breathe in. 
Now kids, today we call that CPR, and they do it on people that have quit breathing. But this little boy had been dead way too long. You can only not have oxygen to your brain from four to six minutes before it's permanent damage, and it had been lo much longer. So that little boy was raised to life again, and it was a miracle. God did it. Oh, it was so wonderful, and I'm sure they love to hear that story and all the other stories that Elisha told them. Well, one time when Elisha wasn't there, the woman said to her husband, I perceive that he is a holy man of God. You know, before she knew that he was a prophet, but when she spent time with him, she could tell that he was holy. Holy meant someone who just tries to follow the Lord, tries to do everything that is right and upstanding. Do you know I know many of you go to church and you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If I ask your family and your friends, would they say, yes, we see a difference. We see a difference in the way they react, in the way that they make decisions, in what they talk about. Would they see that you are someone that truly loves the Lord? Well, she saw that about Elisha. So she said to her husband, would it be all right with you if, if we built him a little room? You know, some people out there have vacation houses. And she says, we could just build him a special room just for him. And he passes by here so much, he could just go in and kick off his shoes and pray and rest and relax. And it would be so wonderful. And the husband said, oh, I think that would be wonderful. And so they had to make the bricks and get the architect and get the builders. And they built a little house just for Elisha. Yeah. So the next time Elisha came to visit, maybe she said to him, you know, Elisha, where you have been sleeping, you're not going to sleep there anymore. No, why don't you come up with me? Up upstairs. So they went upstairs. And there she showed Elisha this little room that she had made. And in the room, they had even furnished it. Now, it wasn't a lot of furniture by our standards, but it was a lot for them. They put a table and a chair and a lamp and a bed. And oh, it was just such a wonderful room. It was upstairs where the breezes could blow. And they had a wonderful view. And then after she showed it to him and said, this is where you'll be sleeping tonight, maybe she said, oh, and by the way, here's the keys. This is your room now. When you pass by, you don't need to ask. You just stop in, come in when you're tired, and it's all yours. And oh, he was so thankful. Oh, it was such a wonderful place. Well, one day when he was there, he was with his servant Gehazi. And he thought, I want to thank that woman. She has been so kind to me. So the Bible says that they, they couldn't think of anything that she might want. So he said to Gehazi, call her. Call her and, and we'll ask her. If you want to know what should be done for someone, ask them. And say unto her, you have just given us so much care. Thank you so much. But what can we do for you? And then he said, do you want me to talk to the king? Do you want me to talk to the captain of the army? You know, kids, if, if I did you a favor, I couldn't call up the queen and ask her. I couldn't talk to someone in charge of the army. But Elisha knew them. He says, whatever you want, I want to give you something significant. You gave me something that was really great. Now, kids, if I ask you, is there anything I could do for you? Anything at all that you want? What would you ask for? Well, now we know she had a lot of money, but people that have a lot of money, it doesn't mean that they're happy. It doesn't mean that they don't want anything else. But the Bible says that she answered him and she says, I want nothing. I, I, I live with my own people. I'm content. God has given me a home in a, my own land. 
I am very happy here. She didn't want anything. And so, after she had come and told him that, the Bible says that then she left. And so when she left, Gehazi said to Elisha, I know what she wants. And Elisha said, you do? And he said, yes. And he told him. And Elisha says, you're right, you're right. Call her again. Call her again. And you know, they called her again. Now, her husband was older. We know that because he died early. The Bible tells us that in another spot. Now, in those days, if your husband died, you didn't automatically get your home and your land. It was given to another man. And maybe it was a distant relative. Maybe it was a close relative. Maybe it was someone that liked you, and maybe it wasn't. So she could have had a fear, you know, I will not be afraid. Her fear could have been, my husband's going to die, and if he dies, I will lose my home. But she was trusting God. She says, she can boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? So that happens. I'm going to trust the Lord. But the Bible says that Elisha said to her, I know your husband is old. And he says, I know what you want. And so he said, you, according to this time of life, in one year, you are going to have a little son. And kids, by her answer, we can tell that that's what she really wanted. Because she said, don't tell me that. No, no, don't, don't lie to me. Don't tell me that if it's not true. You know, her hopes had been up. For years she had wanted a child. And all those years she had never been able to have one. And so she had just said, Lord, I'm going to be content. And now she was saying to Elisha, don't tell me that again. I can't get my hopes up again, only be to, to be disappointed. But he was a man of God, wasn't he? And he was speaking God's words to the people. So if he said, in one year, you are going to have a son, what was she going to have in one year? Ah, you're right. She was going to have a son. And so... For that next year, can you imagine when she did her housework? I'm sure she was singing and happy and light. This was the thing that she wanted most in life that she felt she would never have. Well, the time came and her little baby was born. And there in her arms, she had this little baby. Oh, mm, it was such a cute little baby. Oh, she loved that little son so much. And she would always think, I'm sure, this son was given to me by God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Well, the little son grew up. And as the little son grew up, that little son brought so much joy to her and also to Elisha as he would come and visit. I'm sure he just watched that little boy grow up. And he knew, must have known that little boy very, very well. Well, the Bible tells us that when Elijah and Elisha were gone, and the little boy was a little older, maybe the age of some of you, that he went out one day to help his father in the fields. Now, it was the time of harvest, and I don't know if you boys, but love to help your father, but I'm sure he loved to help his father, and he was out there, and there was a lot of hustle and bustle, and a lot of people, the servants, they were, they were trying to get the harvest in, and all of a sudden, the little boy said, My head, my head, my head is hurting so bad. You know, I've had really bad headaches, and your head can hurt really bad. Well, the father did what most fathers do. When there's something wrong with the children, they say, The mother, she, she can take care of him. And so the father called a servant, but he was very busy. And so he said to the servant, Carry him in and give him to his mother. So they carried him in. And when the little boy came in, his, his head was hurting so much. And, and so the mother, she, she, I'm sure, rocked him and held him and put little cold presses on his head and just said, Oh, Lord, please, please, please heal him. Please make him feel better. And as she was rocking him, ah, 
all of a sudden, she looked, and he wasn't breathing. He was dead. <gasps> Her little boy was dead. And so, you know what? Do you think that she was going to fear? And do you think she was going to get mad at God? Do you think she was going to become bitter and resentful and angry? That's what a lot of people do when something happens that they don't like. But do you know what she did? She took that little boy and she took him up and she put him on Elisha's bed. She remembered that story about Elijah and the little boy that had died. And so she put him on the bed and then she didn't need to leave a babysitter because that little boy was dead. He didn't need anybody taking care of him. And the Bible tells us then that she went out to her husband. Now, from what we know, she never told anybody that her little boy was dead. And she went out to her husband and she said, C could I go see Elisha? You know, kids, when you have a problem, the first person you should go to is God. And she says, I've got to go to God's spokesman. I've got to go to the one that, that hears God's word. And so she said, can I go? and see Elisha. And the husband says, well, it's not the new moon, and it's not a holiday, it's not Easter or Thanksgiving. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you can go if you want to. And so the Bible says that she got a servant, and she said to that servant, saddle up the donkeys. So they saddled up the donkeys, and she said to the servant, ride as fast as you can. Just get there as fast as you can. It was 16 miles, and so she was, her hair was in the wind, and they were just riding as fast as they could to get there. And I'm sure the whole way she was just praying, Oh, Lord, please, please let Elisha be home. Please let him be home. Now, kids, why do you think she was even going? Do you think that God could bring good out of this? The little boy was dead. You know, God says, I want you to trust me that I don't care how bad it is. I can bring good out of it. And she believed God. I hope you believe God too because bad is going to happen to everyone. Whether you believe in God or not, bad things will happen to you and you have a choice. Am I going to choose the truth that God can bring this to my good? Or am I going to get mad and angry and bitter and upset? Some people make the second choice, and they just ruin their lives when God says, Oh, but I had a great blessing in that for you, one that would have been so wonderful. Well, she chose to trust the Lord. Elijah and Gehazi must have been outside because they saw her coming, and they could tell by the way she was writing that there was something wrong. So Elijah sent Gehazi out to meet her and said, say to her, is there something wrong with your husband? And she says, no, it's, it's well. Is there something wrong with you? No, no, I am fine. And then he was to ask, is there something wrong with the child? Well, was there something wrong with the child? Yes, the child was dead. But to Gehazi, she said, it is well. It wasn't well. Why did she say that? because she wanted to go directly to God. She evidently said, no, no, this is something serious. I need to talk to Elisha himself. So when they got there to Elisha, the Bible says that she just fell down at his feet. And she just grabbed his feet. And when she grabbed his feet, she just began sobbing. She just began sobbing. And Gehazi said, thrust her away. And the man of God says, let her alone. Can't you see that her soul is vexed? She's very, something's wrong, and the Lord has hidden it from me. My sister was out jogging one day, and her little son had an accident at school. And so they called her and said, come and get him. And so she says, I'll just jog right over. And they said, no, you need to bring your car. So she got in the car, went over and got her son. And he had hit his head. He had fallen into a a fence and hitting his head and it was very serious and as she went home his head began to swell 
well, you know, there's the bones of the head, and when you're, something swells on my arm, it can swell up, but there's no place to swell, and so it cuts off the circulation. And her neighbor was a doctor, and he says, we have got to get him to the doctor's, the hospital immediately, and they went. And she checked the little boy in, her little son, and she just did everything, and he was not expected to live. And so after everything was done, she called my mom. And the minute she started talking to my mom, she just broke down in sobs. She couldn't talk at all. But all during that other time, she had been strong. That was this woman. When she finally saw Elisha, she just broke down sobbing, and she couldn't even speak. And finally she said, did I, did I ask for a son? And right then, Elisha knew that there was a problem with the son. And so he said to Gehazi, because it was 16 miles back to her house, he said, get yourself ready. You're younger than I am. And he gave him his staff. And he says, when you get there, you put this staff on the face of the child and on your way. Don't you talk to anyone. So here was Gehazi running along. And maybe somebody said, hey, Gehazi, how's it going? And he keep going, hey, Gehazi, where, where are you going so fast? He couldn't talk to anybody. But he got there, and she said, I'm staying with you, Elisha. And he got there, and he took his staff, and he put it on the face of the child, and he went up to Elisha's room, because she had said, I, pu I put him on your bed, put him in a, on Elisha's room, put that staff on his face, and nothing happened. And so Gehazi came back. Well, in the meantime, Elisha and the woman, they were heading on out. And so when he got back, he said, well, I did what you told me, but nothing happened. He says that the child didn't awake. Now, you know what Gehazi didn't do? Gehazi didn't even look to see what was wrong with the child. The child was dead. He just thought, oh, maybe he's in a coma or maybe he's sleeping. And so, you know how some people do their job? Oh, yeah, I'll do it, but, oh, okay, I'm done, I'm done. They don't go the extra mile and really do a good job. And that was him. So when Elijah came in the room, the Bible says, Behold! <gasps> it was the first time he realized the child wasn't just sick. He wasn't sleeping. He wasn't in a coma. The child was dead. He realized the seriousness of the situation, and so he sent the woman out. He sent Gehazi out, and this time he just says, Oh, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Lord, only you can do this. I have no power of my own. Only you. You're the one who has the power. Show me what you want me to do. And the Lord just showed him, You do the same thing that Elijah had done. And so he went over and he put his hands on his hands and, and, you know, and then he breathed into him and he felt a little warmth because this boy had been dead for her to go all the 16 miles there and all the 16 miles back. He'd been dead a long time. So just breathing into his little mouth wasn't going to bring him back to life. It had to be God. It had to be a miracle if anything was going to happen. Well, he felt a little warmer. The little boy did. And so Elisha got up and prayed again, walked back and forth and prayed again. And then the Lord said, do it again. So he did it again. And he breathed into his mouth and put his hands on his hands. And then he heard the most wonderful sound. This little boy sneezed seven times. You can sneeze with me. ka choo 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 and then after he sneezed those seven times, he just sat up in bed. It was a miracle. He was alive. God had brought him back to life. God had brought good out of bad. Only God can do that. And all oh, that woman was so thankful. She had trusted God. And so Elisha said, bring her in. She came in. And I know what she wanted to do. She wanted to just grab her little son and cover him with kisses. But what she did was, before she did that, she praised the Lord. She gave thanks to God. Oh, God, thank you so much. When God does something for you, do you remember to thank him? 
She did. Oh, she thanked him, and then she picked up her little son, and she was so happy. She was so thankful that she had made the right decision. She was so thankful that she had said, I'm going to trust God to bring good out of bad. Oh, it's very bad. But God, he is ruler over all. He can bring good out of anything. Now, remember that Elisha, had promised her that little son. And so for one year, she had the promise that she was going to have a little baby. Well, there was another son. And this son, he was promised also. But he was promised for 4,000 years. It was 4,000 years before he was born that the first promise came that he was going to come. And you remember that her little son brought her so much joy. Well, this son... Oh, we don't know if this is a picture of him or not. But he brought so much joy to his family. Can you imagine having a friend like him? One that always did the right thing, that was kind and considerate and said, said things that were wise and good and always led you in the right direction. Can you imagine having an older brother like that? Or a child like that? Oh, he brought so much joy to all who met him and came in contact with him. But you remember that that little boy in our story today died? Well, this son, he died too. And you know, the Bible says, though, that he didn't get sick and die like the other little boy. He allowed people to put him to death. He could have stopped it. But no, he says, I came for this very reason to die on the cross in your place for your sin. And remember that she put her little son on Elisha's bed because he was dead? Well, they took this son, and of course you know now it was the Lord Jesus Christ, and they put him in a tomb because he was truly dead. And the Bible says, though, that he came alive again. Now, the little son, her son, he was raised by God's power. But this son, the Lord Jesus, he came to life again on his own power. He had the power within himself to bring life back into his body. You know, now the, the woman's little boy, after he grow, grew up, you know what happened, don't you? He died. But this son, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came back to life again, he didn't die. No, the Bible says that people saw him go up into heaven. And we know today that he is seated at the right hand of God and he is ruling the entire universe. He now has his glory again. He laid aside that glory when he came to this earth and came in a disguise, but now all that glory is there again, and the angels are worshiping him. And you know, he is the only one in the entire universe that is 100% God and 100% percent man. When he took upon himself a human body when he came down here to this earth, when he ascended back into heaven, he still has that human body. And yet it's a glorified body. And he is ruling and reigning. And that's why we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. He is right there watching. He is praying for us. He sees everything that happens to us. He is our helper. And we need to make the choice because he's our helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Anything that they do to me, he's going to work it out for my good and his glory. Now, you know, kids, the very first thing that God wants to do for you is he wants to come in and forgive your sin and wash you clean and make you one of his children. And you can put your faith and trust in him right now and he will do that. And after you have done that, when something fearful happens, just remember, God is right there with me. He loves me. He's protecting me. I don't need to be afraid. Isn't it wonderful to know that nothing bad can happen to you, that God won't turn it into your good? Oh, that is so wonderful. 
You know, God's word is so precious, and it's true. Oh, we love him so much. I hope you love him. I hope you become like Elisha, someone who seeks to do that which is right at all times. Oh, thank you so much for joining me today. I've got to go now, but I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I love you. God loves you. Bye. Bye. Bye.